As you watch this teaching, please subscribe, like, and comment so more people can see. Welcome to Home Group. My name is Rick Renner, and tonight I'm here with Joel Renner and Denise Renner. And Denise Renner, you are wearing your Bedouin jewelry. Yes. Wait a minute. What is a Bedouin? A Bedouin really is a nomad, and that is made by Bedouins who live out in the wilderness in Israel. That really is Bedouin jewelry, and it's not very expensive, but I think it's really cool. Can you show that? Isn't that pretty? It's beautiful, Mama. And I like the colors and everything, and yeah, thank you, Rick. I like you. I think you look really pretty tonight, Sister Renner. Well, thank you, Rick. And Mr. Renner, we're glad that you're here. <laughs> and home group, thank you for joining us. In this home group, we study the Bible. That's what we do. And what the Bible says is what we want to obey. The Word of God is a gift. It's a gift from God to us. And we need to cherish it, study it. And really, it's just it's it's the biggest gift for us to have. And it's just wonderful that we get to study it together. And please comment. Tell us what you think about our home group, about what we're studying, about what we're talking about. Chime in. We really read comments. I'm teaching this series called The Holy Spirit and You, Working Together as Heaven's Dynamic Duo. It's based on my book, and it is the first time I have ever taught the entire book. This book is so good, I just decided to teach it. And right now we're offering the series, which is 10 parts with the book and comes with a study guide. And by the way, the study guide is free. You can just go to renner.org and download the study guide right now. But you can order all of this at our website, renner.org, or give us a call. And as soon as we hear from you, we're going to pray for you. And if you order these materials, we're going to get them right to you. But tonight we're going to pick up where we left off last night. And last night we began talking about divine misery and the deeper dimension. Mm -hmm. How you finally come to a place where you're just miserable as a Christian and you want more. And that's when you get filled with more. But tonight we're going to go to John chapter 14. So if you get your Bible, I have my Bible. Do you guys have your Bibles? I yes, have sir. my Bible. When you come to John chapter 14, Jesus is speaking to his disciples and it is Jesus' last teaching session before the cross. Now, most people don't realize it, but John 14, 15, 16, and 17 are all one event. When Jesus gathered together with his apostles in the upper room, he served them communion. He spoke to them about the ministry of the Holy Spirit in John chapter 17. He prayed his great high priestly prayer. All of that happened in one event in the upper room. And I'm sure that it went on for hours and hours and hours because there's so much in those chapters. John 14, 15, 16, and 17. But let me ask you a question. If you were going to say your final words to somebody for the very last time, wouldn't you really think about what you would say? I remember when Denise and I finished our ministry in Riga and we were moving to Moscow when I stood in front of the church to speak my last words to them as their pastor. I remember thinking, wow, these are my last pastoral words. These need to be the most important words I've ever spoken because this is what I'm going to leave them with. Well, that's what Jesus did in this chapter. So here he's speaking his final words. What is he going to say? He could talk about the end times. He could talk about the church. Oh my goodness, there were so many things Jesus could have addressed. But Jesus chose to speak to the disciples about the ministry of the Holy Spirit. That is the final subject he left with them because he knew they were going to have to hitch up with the Holy Spirit in a brand new way. And when you come to John chapter 14, let's look at it together. The Bible tells us in verse 16, And I will pray the Father, and He will give you another comforter, that He may abide with you forever. And notice that Jesus calls the Holy Spirit here the Comforter. And in fact, Jesus calls the Holy Spirit the Comforter four times in John 14, 15, and 16. Let's look at it. John 14, verse 16, I will pray the Father, He'll give you another Comforter. Then look at verse 26. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Spirit, so now he calls the Holy Spirit a Comforter twice. Then go to chapter 15, verse 26. 
Jesus said, but when the comforter is come, now a third time he calls the Holy Spirit a comforter. Then go to chapter 16, verse 7, where Jesus says, nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It's expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the comforter will not come to you. So Jesus in three chapters calls the Holy Spirit a comforter three, four times. Comforter, 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 comforter. So this must be pretty important. If I said something to you four times, I think you would get it that this was important. Well, the word comforter in Greek is the word parakletos. It's a compound of two words. The word para means alongside. The word kletos is a form of the word kaleo, which means to call. When you compound the two words together, the word comforter in Greek is parakletos, which is one who is called alongside. And this tells us, first of all, above everything else, the Holy Spirit is called to be para alongside of us. He is to be with us. But this word parakletos, during the time that Jesus used it, described a trainer. It described a coach. It described a teacher. Now, wait, wait, wait. The best translation really would be coach. I will pray the Father, he'll give you another coach. Another? What do you mean another? Well, another in Greek could be two words. It could be the word heteros. Heteros means another one of a totally different kind. It's where you get the term for a heterosexual, two sexes of totally different kinds. If Jesus had used the word heteros, it would have meant I'll pray the Father and he's going to give you somebody else totally unlike anyone you've ever known. You won't know anything about him. But that's not the word Jesus used. He used the word alos. The word alos means just like me, nearly identical to me in every way, where Jesus says, I'm going to pray the Father. He's going to give you another coach. And when he comes, he's going to be just like me. So you have to ask, what had Jesus been for the apostles for three years? He had been a coach. That's what he had been. They understood that. He had been their master. They had been his pupils. They were his apprentices. They understood they were submitted to his authority. They were to do whatever he said. He was the master. They were the apprentice and he was their coach. Jesus literally coached the apostles. He told them how to go forth. He told them what to pack in their suitcases. He told them what to take, what not to take. Jesus told them how to cast out demons. Jesus told them how to lay their hands on the sick. Jesus was like a master who was coaching those men, teaching them how to do everything. And he didn't just teach them doctrinal things. He taught them practical application, how to actually do the ministry. And for three and a half years, those disciples looked to Jesus as their coach. And they did not make a move without his coaching. That was their relationship. He was the master. They were the apprentices. Well, let's think about a coach. What does a coach do? All right, Denise, you had a vocal coach. Does your coach sing for you? No. What does your coach do? He corrects me and encourages me, and he tells me what to do. That's what a coach does. And he tells me how to do it. And he plays the piano. <laughs> they all, all play right. the piano. Okay, a little bit. Let's take it into the world of sports. If you have a baseball coach, does your coach catch the ball for you? He teaches you how to catch the ball. Does the coach hit the ball for you? No, but he helps you know how to hit the ball. A coach empowers you to do what you're supposed to do, but your coach doesn't do it for you. But... Can I say something right yeah, there? Yeah. We have a friend, and he was a famous uh, goalie in the in hockey, and now he's a coach. Well, they his team just won won the championship in Russia. In Russia. Well, the goalie is the main guy of the game because he stops everybody. He steps, stops that puck from getting through and the other team making a score. Really lays down his life for getting that puck not to go through. Well, my friend was the coach of the goalie and they won the championship. 
the goalie said, I do not want to play on a team without that coach. Wow, that's how important a coach is. <laughs> the coach really guides you and tells you what to do. Well, so you have to think about Jesus. Jesus was a coach. That, I mean, it's truly what he was. If you read the Gospels, Jesus literally told them what to pack in their suitcase. He told them what not to take in their pants. He told them how much money to take, how much money they should not take, what they should do when they go into somebody's house. Jesus told them how long they should stay, what they should eat when food was put in front of them, where they should lay their hands, how they should speak to demons. Jesus coached, 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 coached. And those disciples became totally dependent upon Jesus coaching in their lives. Then now in John chapter 14, Jesus said, I'm going to go away. And immediately they said, go away. What do you mean go away? How are we going to make it without you? And Jesus, don't worry, don't worry, don't worry. I'm going to pray the Father. He's going to give you another coach. And the word another is so important because it means when the Holy Spirit comes, Alos, he'll be just like me. In fact, if you have the Holy Spirit, it will be like you still have me because he does what I do. He thinks what I think. He says what I say. He and I, we are identical in every way. So if you have the Holy Spirit, it will be like you still have me. He is just like me. Oh, powerful. Now there are people who say, oh, how I wish. I could have walked where Jesus walked in the Holy Land with Jesus 2,000 years ago. Well, I understand that. But you're missing the point altogether. Because if you have the Holy Spirit, Jesus is still here. It's like you still have Jesus. Jesus says, if you have him, it's like you still have me. He's another coach just like me completely. Isn't that amazing? I love it. And then... It goes on and it says, I will pray the Father that he may give you another comforter. I like the word give because the Holy Spirit is a gift. It's a gift that comes to you in salvation. I will give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever. And look at verse 18. Jesus says, I will not leave you comfortless I will come to you. He says, if he's with you, you will feel that I have returned to you just in an invisible form. And the word comfortless is the Greek word orphanos. What word do you hear? Orphan. 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 It's a word for orphan. Or it was also used to describe students who felt they had been abandoned by their teacher. Well, that's what they felt. Jesus was their teacher. Jesus was their master. Jesus was their coach. And now he's saying he's going to leave them. And he said, hey, 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 I'm not deserting you. I'm not abandoning you. I'm going to come back to you, but it's going to be different because I'm going to come through the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Now, wait, I want to show you one more thing. Look at verse 12, John 14, verse 12. Jesus said, verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do because I go unto my Father. All right, let me be very honest. That verse really kind of threw me into a tailspin for years because Jesus says, greater works shall you do. Well, what kind of greater works could we do than raising the dead? Can you do anything greater than that? Or walking on water? What kind of greater works is Jesus talking about here? How can we do anything greater than what Jesus did? But in this verse, he's not talking about greater in quality, but in quantity. Hmm. more. When Jesus was in the earth, he was in one place at one time. And so if you wanted to see miraculous activity, you had to be in the same territory where Jesus was. Mm -hmm. But when Jesus went to the Father, he poured out the gift of the Holy Spirit and through the Holy Spirit, it's like Jesus is everywhere. So now you don't have to be in one geographical location to see the activity. Now, 
a greater number of works are happening worldwide because the Holy Spirit has been poured out. Jesus said the greatest day ever is when I'm going to send my spirit and suddenly my power and my presence will be everywhere. And rather than these things just happening in one little geographical location, it's going to be multiplied all over the face of the earth. And wherever the Holy Spirit is, Jesus is there. That's why Jesus said, wherever two or three of you are gathered together in my presence, there am I. He's here right now. He's here right now through the ministry of the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit has come to be our coach. Now, Denise and I and our family, we've done a lot of fun things. And God has enabled us to do a lot of very victorious, successful things in our life. It's pretty amazing. If you look at the things God's enabled us to do, but sweetheart, it's not because you and I are so smart. We're not so smart. We have gone to areas of the world that we didn't know. We've done what we didn't know how to do. And we've had victory after victory after victory. You know why? Not because we're smart, because we learned to open our ears and listened to the Holy Spirit and trust him as a coach. His coaching to you will only be a benefit to you if you listen to him and obey. And if we've done anything right, just we've listened and we've obeyed. We grew up singing, trust and obey, for there's There's no no other other way way to be happy happy in Jesus, Jesus, but but to trust trust and and obey. obey. That's what it's all about. He is the master. We are the apprentice. It's like when the Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, take Sunday school to the entire Soviet Union on television. Nobody had ever done that. In 1991 and 1992, no one had ever done that. And you had never had a TV program. I hadn't had a TV program. Well, I had a short one when we were five first minutes. Married. Five minutes. On five radio. till seven in the morning. I was morning. on radio every day. Yeah, well, on, on television. Tele- television. But I mean, but to live in a communist world, we had just moved here. We didn't. We didn't know anything. But I did know the voice of the Holy Spirit. And I remember some of our team saying, "This is crazy. You can't do this. To get on TV, you have to work with communist leaders. You have to work with." Secret security and KGB controls the mass media. You know what? All of that was true. It was all true. Where are you going to get the money to pay for that? I don't know. I don't know. But I know I heard the Holy Spirit speak to me. And because he spoke, I obeyed. You know, one day I said to the Lord, Lord, why did you choose me? I mean, if I was going to choose somebody, I wouldn't have chosen me. You could have chosen anybody. You know what the Lord said to me? Because I knew you would do what I tell you to do. He's just looking for somebody to trust and obey, to hear and to do. And sweetheart, honestly, if God's enabled us with the help of our partners to do anything, it's simply because he gave us the courage to hear and to do what we've been told to do. And I've learned that if we will obey what the Holy Spirit says to do, it'll work. If we operate without the instruction of the Holy Spirit, it may not work. But it's guaranteed. If you listen to the Holy Spirit and obey Him, He will coach you how to walk from defeat into victory, how to walk from non-productiveness into productiveness, He sees it. He knows it. He is the master. Now, people are afraid to trust him because they can't see him. Well, think about the disciples. They could trust Jesus because they could touch Jesus. They could look into his eyes. They heard his voice with their own ears. And that's why Jesus said to them three times, In John 14, 15, 16, when the Holy Spirit comes, not only is he the comforter, but he is the spirit of truth. truth. You can trust him, even if you can't see him. 
It may be not like you relating to me where you can touch me, look into my eyes and visibly see me and audibly hear my voice. When the Holy Spirit comes, he's just as trustworthy as I am. He is the spirit of truth. John chapter 14, John 15, 16, three times Jesus said he's the spirit of truth, the spirit of truth, the spirit of truth. Don't be afraid of him. Though you cannot see him with your eyes, he's as reliable as I am. And you can bank your life and bank your ministry on anything he says to you. And if you'll obey him, he will be to you another comforter just like me, Denise. Well, I I just can't get away from what uh, it says in Hebrews chapter chapter 11 about Moses because it just touches my heart so much because he was following him who was invisible and that's what we're doing the Holy Spirit he is invisible but I'll read you this verse because Hebrews chapter 11 yeah chapter 11 and it and uh, and it and it's exactly 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 what we're doing and it says um Yep, here it is, verse 27 of Hebrews chapter 11. By faith, talking about Moses, he forsook Egypt. I mean, that was hard. That was a really hard thing to do. Not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured as seeing him who is invisible. Moses did all that. He endured because he was following him, seeing him who is invisible. And you and I can't see the Lord. We can't see the Holy Spirit. He's invisible, but we're following him. And he has fruits that he has in our lives and his, and, and his gifts that come through our lives. We're witnessing him, Rick. We're witnessing his presence in our lives. We are. He's totally faithful. I mean, even though he's invisible, what he does is visible. And we have to trust him and he's our coach. And that's what Jesus said. I will pray the father. Don't worry. He's going to give you another comforter, the Holy Spirit. And you can trust him just like you trust me. He's completely reliable. If you have him, it's like you still have me. So before you go to bed tonight... So Holy Spirit, I want to trust you just like I would trust Jesus. Teach me to have an ear to hear you and to do whatever you say. We'll see you tomorrow. If you enjoyed this teaching, please subscribe, like, and comment so more people can see it.